Hi, my name is Quoc Le and I'm, and I'm a researcher in the Google Brain team. I will present some of our recent work on noisy student training and how it can be used to improve robustness for computer vision models. In the past few years, we have seen rapid progress in using deep learning for computer vision. For example, on the ImageNet dataset, the error rate has dropped significantly over the years. And the rapid uh, progress has enabled many important applications. For example, at Google, uh, we use the models for image search and cell wrapping cars. However, in practice, we also observe that these models are not robust enough. For example, if you apply a state-of-the-art object detection to a video, you may see that the detections can be quite unstable and the bounding boxes can change from one frame to another. In other words, the detection model is not robust enough. As you can see here from one frame to another, the bounding boxes changes. Another observation is that ImageNet classifier can be easily uh, can easily misclassify test images that are harder or out of distribution. For example, as shown here, are uh, several images from the ImageNet A uh, test set, and even even though the objects can be be easily recognized by humans, a ResNet classifier can be easily fooled. For example, the ImageNet the image on the left is recognized as um, sea lion by a ResNet model, even though the correct category is fox squirrel. And our intuition uh, for the lack of robustness in the state of that classifier is that they don't, they don't see enough images. Um, uh, so for instance, ImageNet classifiers only sees about 1.3 million images, whereas a 10 years old um, person can already see, see 7.5 billion images, and more, most of them are unlabeled. So with this in observation, our intuition is that in order to improve the quality and robustness of our classifiers, we need to make use of more images, especially unlabeled images. So our question became, can we use unlabeled data to improve accuracy and robustness of image models. Note that before our research, a majority of success in computer vision has been supervised learning, which, which only use label images. And our focus in this uh, talk and in this research is to use unlabeled data. Uh, um, we have tried many methods in this space. Um, from unsupervised uh, learning and recently self-supervised learning uh, and also semi-supervised learning. And we have all failed many times. Uh, but we have recently found a very simple and effective method uh, to use unlabeled data to improve state-of-the-art classifiers. The method works as follows. First, we should train a normal classifier on labeled data. Uh, this is what, what everybody is, uh, know, knows how to do. For example, uh, training a ResNet 50 on the ImageNet dataset. Now, the second step is we use the classifier to generate pseudo labels on a much larger dataset of unlabeled images. For example, images downloaded from the internet. And the, in the uh, third step, we combine the two datasets the label dataset and the pseudo label dataset and train a student model on it. This method, um, also, known, uh, also known as cell training, is not new and has been tried many times in the past. And the problem with this method is that, however, the a new student can learn from the mistakes and the teacher 
And because of that, it won't do much better than the teacher. Now, our modification and our solution for this problem is to add noise to the student uh, to improve uh, the student further. The key idea is that uh, when you use a teacher to generate the pseudo labels, uh, you should uh, not noise the teacher um, so that it, the teacher can generate uh, pseudo labels as accurately as possible. But when you uh, when you train the teacher, uh, when you train the student, uh, it ha the student has to be noised so that it learns to match a more powerful teacher, and hence it becomes more robust uh, than the teacher. Uh, this figure tries to summarize our noisy student training method. Again, uh, first we train a teacher model uh, uh, with label data. The model is then used to infer pseudo labels on unlabeled uh, images downloaded from the internet. Next, we train a larger student model on the combined data with noise injected, such, uh, such as data augmentation, dropout, or stochastic depth. Um, and after student is trained, we then make it the new teacher and iterate the process to generate new pseudo labels train a new student, et cetera. And uh, let's, uh, one important part of our algorithm is the use of data augmentation. So let's take a closer look at the use of data augmentation as noise during training of the student to see how noise can improve the robustness of the student. Now, first, let's suppose the teacher model generate the target logic on the right for the, uh, for the image on the left. Um, where uh, here, zero point eight indicates the probability of the image being uh, a cat category. And then during the training of the student, we translate the input image a little bit and give it to the student. The student is forced to produce the same target logic. This is now fixed, uh, even though the input image is now distorted or translated. This way, the student becomes more robust than the teacher because it sees more variations of the best of the of the test uh, of the input image than the teacher. This simple method can actually significantly improve the state of the art uh, image net classification. In this table, we compare against the state of the art results on the image net dataset. Here, we use an unlabeled dataset of 300 million images downloaded from the internet. Our method, noisy student, achieves 88.4% top one accuracy, which is the new state of the art on this dataset. Uh, the same, the same uh, model L2, which is this efficient at L2, without any noisy student training, only achieves 85.5 accuracy, uh, top one accuracy, which is around 3% worse. And if you're familiar with the ImageNet dataset, 1% uh, ac accuracy improvement on this dataset is uh, greatly significant. There are all, also other competitive results, such as models pre-trained on 3.5 Instagram, uh, 3.5 billion Instagram images, uh, labeled with hashtags. But the best result there is only 86.4, which is 2% worse than our method. Our key results, however, are about improving robustness of the classifiers. Here we consider three test sets, um, ImageNet A, ImageNet C, and P. They are collected by Daniel Hendricks at Berkeley. Note that these test sets are, are only used as test sets um, for evaluating the classifier uh, from the previous slides. The classifier uh, don't need to be retrained. Uh, first, the ImageNet A dataset consists of naturally looking images that are harder than usual images. For example, the top left image will be, classifier, will be classified as lighthouse by a normal classifier, even though the correct category is sea lion. 
in the middle, we have a few images from the image net C test set, uh, which uh, are transformed artificially by adding noise to the image. Uh, for example, the top left image uh, of a, is a snow leopard, uh, but it is brightened in such a way that many classifiers will recognize it as an electric gray. Uh, on the right, we have a few images from the ImageNet P dataset, which are transformed into a video sequence from a target image. As the images are transformed, the classifier flips the prediction from plate rack at the bottom to medicine chest in the middle, and then refrigerator at the, uh, in the top. In other words, the classifier flips the prediction and um, is not robust to small transformations in the in, uh, input image. Uh, first, on the ImageNet A dataset, again, the images on uh, this dataset are naturally looking difficult images. A ResNet classifier would get a very low accuracy of 4.7% top one. And on the, although you can get better classifiers to achieve 61% by pre-training on Instagram, noisy student gets 83.7%, which is a lot better than the previous state of the art and closes the gap to normal ImageNet accuracy. Next, on the ImageNet C dataset, again, the ImageNet C dataset consists of images that are transformed by certain distortions like brightening or motion blurring, etc., which make the images harder to recognize. A standard ResNet classifier only gets 39% uh, top one accuracy. Our method um, achieves much better accuracy, 77.8%, which also closes the gap to standard ImageNet accuracy too. Finally, uh, on the ImageNet P dataset, again, the ImageNet P dataset consists of images that are transformed by, uh, transformed into a video sequence to test how sensitive the classifier is from one frame to another. Here, the main metric is mean flip, flip rate on the right, which measures how much the classifier flips the predictions. Uh, uh, a normal ResNet will flip around 58% of the time, whereas our method only flips 12% of the time. Our method can train an uh, efficient net that flips only 12% of the time, which means that it's, in, it's more invariant to uh, uh, input transformations. Um, and 12% is significantly better than 58% by the ResNet. So far, we have demonstrated that noisy student training can improve the accuracy and robustness on ImageNet classification. But can this method be used for all the tasks? The answer is yes. Here, we use noisy student training for the COCO object detection dataset. The baseline SpyNet model achieves 52.8 AP accuracy. Uh, using noisy student, we can achieve 1.5 AP gain on top of this baseline. And that uh, and to achieve 54.3 AP on this data set. Note that this gain is quite significant um, because we also try all the methods to improve uh, on the baseline and failed. Um, for example, pre-training the backbone on image net classification didn't improve any, uh, any uh, the baseline. And so the re result is worse than 52.8. Or you can use a checkpoint from SimClear for, um, mm. as a backbone, but that also get worse result than 52.8. So this improvement is the first time we see that using unlabeled data um, uh, can improve uh, accuracy of a strong baseline model. The method also works well on uh, Pascal semantic segmentation. Here, the NAS FPN baseline got 88.7 accuracy and noisy student training adds another 
M IOU to the accuracy to achieve 90%. On that set, on the that set, the accuracy is 90.5%, which is also the state of the art on this data set. To the best of my knowledge, this is for the first time it is beneficial beneficial to use unlabeled data uh, to improve ac uh, segmentation accuracy on the Pascal data set. And just to compare the previous uh, state of the art accuracy on this data set um, is DeepLab. Um, uh, v3 and deep lab v3 only achieves 89 percent on this data set here are some images from the pascal augmented data set and on the right you can see the pseudo label seg segments created by the teacher model Interestingly, the Pascal dataset also comes, uh, comes with human label segments. And as you can be seen here, the annotations cre created by the teacher model is even better than the annotations uh, created by the human experts. Finally, I would like to point out the significance of our results. In particular, previously, when people use unlabeled data for computer vision models, they observed the following phenomenon. This, they, find, they found that although the gain is good when the amount of labeled data is, is small, but when the amount of labeled data is large, uh, the gain is no longer, no longer good. In fact, you may see some drop in accuracy compared to supervised learning. However, our recent work on noisy student training really bridges the gap uh, by showing that semi-supervised learning can improve significant learn, uh, uh, supervised learning on both small and large data regimes. This insight is also highlighted in a blog post by Vincent Van Hoek calling the recent developments in semi-supervised learning a revolution. So, so far I have talked about the, noisy, uh, about the noisy student training method. And the key idea in noisy student uh, training is to use pseudo label um, data generated from the teacher. And when training the student model, we need to add noise uh, so that it becomes more robust than the teacher. Um, I want to emphasize that uh, with noisy student training, you can use unlabeled data to improve accuracy and robustness of your model quite easily. Um, in our experiments, noisy student training can work well with small and large scale data sets. Uh, it also works well with multiple applications, such as classification, segmentation, and detection. We believe that this method is so simple and so effective that everybody should give it a try soon to improve the quality and the robustness of their model. Thank you.